Take it away, Jerry. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Oh, let's do that again. Here we go. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Take it away, Jerry. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it, let it shine, let it shine, let it, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Good morning. <laughs> I'm Laurie Holiday. I'll be your liturgist today. Welcome to Hillview. I have a couple of updates. You probably have seen, many of you, in the news that there is a new proposal for the United Methodist Church. And according to the newspapers, it's a done deal. It's not a done deal. That it was 16 people who came together. They were not authorized by anybody in the church to come together and to make this agreement. But it was bishops, a, couple, a few bishops from other countries, the Philippines and Africa, and some from the Good News Movement, some from the Reconciling Movement, no one from the Western Jurisdiction, and which we are part of. And those 16 people came up with this proposal. And the proposal would be that the conservative churches would be able to branch off, leave the United Methodist Church, and have a new denomination. We would still keep the name United Methodist and that they would be allowed, the ones breaking off, would be allowed to keep all of their own buildings, which is a big deal because you may be aware and you may not be aware, even our church property, all churches are owned by the annual conference. And so this is very gracious proposal. In addition to that, the group that's branching off that they estimate would be about 20%, would receive $25 million, which I question. <laughs> and so the reason it's not a done deal is that there have been other proposals that have come forward also, and that the only body that can speak for the United Methodist Church is our general conference. And we have a general conference in May in Minneapolis, I'm making plans to be there as a volunteer so that I can report back what is happening during that time. And it's going to be a historic general conference. So the general conference will vote on all of these different proposals, including this one. And I have never heard of any proposal going before general conference without being changed. Also, the Judicial Council has yet to rule on the constitutionality of this proposal. 
So I just wanted to give you an update to tell you there's progress being made and that we are still going to be the United Methodist Church here. And it's not going to change who we are as a loving, reconciling congregation. But it's not yet a done deal. Number 237, Sing We Now of Christmas. Sing we now of Christmas, Noel sing we hear. Hear our grateful praises to the babe so dear. Sing we, Noel, the King is born, Noel. Sing we now of Christmas, sing we now, Noel. From the eastern country came the kings afar, bearing gifts to Bethlehem, guided by a star. Sing we, Noel, the king is born, Noel. Sing we now a Christmas, sing we now, Noel. Gold and myrrh they took their gifts of greatest price. There was ne'er a stable so like paradise. Sing we Noel, the King is born Noel. Sing we now a Christmas, sing we now Noel. And let us pray. Gracious God, today we thank you for making yourself known to us in Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping us to know your character, your glory, and your grace. All praise be to you, O God, because you have revealed yourself to us. All praise be to you, Lord Jesus, because you have shown us God and because you have embodied divine grace so that we might receive it. All praise be to you, Holy Spirit, for helping us to live in that grace each day. Fill us afresh with your power, Spirit of God, so that we might share the good news of Christ with the world, beginning with our friends and neighbors. Amen. Let us pray. And we do have a prayer response. Next slide. Lord of light, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, there are many things that concern us and call us to prayer. We open our hearts to you in gratitude and wonder. We pray for those who rage and are quick to anger, for those who seem to be eaten up by intolerance. We pray for those who express their contempt and fury and violence to themselves and others. We grieve at those who have lost their lives to aggression due to fighting, war, criminal violence, and terrorism. We especially pray for peace to abide between our country and Iran. Lord of light, hear our prayer. Help us to see beyond the headlines, to stand up for the women and children, the families, the victims, those starving and displaced. We call out for your mercy. Safeguard the journalists who bring the news, relate the stories of imprisoned, the refugee, those made invisible by war, bigotry, and hatred. Safeguard the whistleblowers. Sustain us as we examine our own hearts, shed our own contempt, and learn the practice of peacemaking in our homes and communities. Lord of light, hear our prayer. This season can be a time of anxiety. We can sense tension and disharmony instead of peace. Many feel depression and despair instead of well-being and belonging. Help us to understand and accept those who suffer in mind, body, and spirit. They may be close or far away. Help us to learn compassion and to practice generosity, consideration, kindness, and mutual regard. We pray for those who are also without homes, who are estranged from their families, who feel alone and isolated. May we grow in our practice of charity and give beyond counting. Guide each of us to do the right thing in our own special way, for the need is great. Lord of light, 
hear our prayer. We pray for all recovering from fires, floods, or winter weather, that God will guide them through the challenge that they face, renew their spirits, and open the hearts of many to assist and encourage them. Lord of light, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for any who are ill this day, for those who are homebound, for those who struggle with addictions, and those who who struggle with thoughts of self-harm. Lord, give them the strength, the courage to keep moving forward relying and trusting in you. Lord of light, hear our prayer. We give thanks that you are the Lord of light, and we join together in the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. reading is from Matthew chapter 2 verses 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east of Jerusalem or came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all of Jerusalem with him, and calling together all their chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, and by no means least among the rulers of Judah. Judah? Not Judea. Sorry. From who you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. 
Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them that the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go to pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen as it is rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. competitive. Just as humans, we are competitive. I had this idea reinforced on Christmas Day at my home. Jared and Adriana, my son and daughter-in-law, brought five boxes with them for Christmas, and they were not gifts to us. They were part of a game, a competitive game on building gingerbread houses. So each group of two were to build a gingerbread house in 10 minutes. And they asked me to be the judge of these gingerbread houses. It was Christmas Day. I did not want there to be winners and losers. And so when I judged these different houses, I went to to first to Sarah and Tim, and I said, oh, you have the best traditional gingerbread house. Then I went to Sean and Cameron. You have the best southwestern gingerbread house. (laughs) I went to Jared and Adriana. You have the best mid-century modern gingerbread house. And to Jennifer and Emily, and I said, you have the best gingerbread house with a significant sunroof. (laughs) And then I went to Rita and Lynn and said, you have the best gingerbread house that didn't quite make it through an earthquake. (laughs) My kids were not satisfied. It's like when they were young and they would ask me who my favorite was. And I'd say, but you're my favorite five-year-old. You're my favorite 
10-year-old. It just wasn't a good enough answer for them. And just as we are competitive that way and we want to know that we are right, we are the best, we've done the same thing to our faith and our religion. So Epiphany, oh, the wise men, the magis, were probably of what we consider to be one of the oldest, if not the oldest, religion, Zoroastrianism. And they were astrologers, astronomers. They followed the stars. They were not Jewish. They were of a completely different religion. And they went to follow the star to see this baby. And they brought gifts with them. And they were the first Gentiles, first non-Jewish people to go and to worship the light. That is significant. But what is even more significant is that nowhere in this story were they told to convert. That the only way they could see the light of God to see Jesus was if they became the other religion. Isn't that amazing? So Epiphany invites us to celebrate the many faces of God and the many ways God is revealed to us. But we like to think that we know the right answers, that our faith is the right faith. And yet, people can look at the very same thing and see something different. People can hear the very same word and hear something different. Maybe. Do you hear Yanny? Laurel. Laurel. Or Laurel. 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 A okay. recent Twitter poll found That's that. That's enough. Oh. And what did you hear? How many of you heard Yanny? How many heard Laurel? Isn't that bizarre? I heard Yanny so clearly. I don't know where you're coming from hearing Laurel. <laughs> But we can hear the same thing and have a different interpretation of it. That's how I like to think of the Gospels even. Experiencing the same thing, but having a different understanding Do of it. Do you hear it? <laughs> when I was in college, I was taking a college physics class, and I loved the class. But it was the most humbling thing one day. It's the first time I remember this happening. I had to understand a concept, and I could not understand the concept. It was so humbling that the person next to me understood the concept. And he tried every way he could to explain that concept to me. But no matter how hard he tried, I could not understand and to this day, I don't remember what the concept was, but I never did figure it out. That was so humbling to realize that I had limitations, and I have many limitations. I have found that out through the years. And that is part of intellectual humility. Not assuming that we are always right, but assuming that perhaps our minds are not open enough, and that perhaps we are wrong sometimes, and that we don't have every answer. Intellectual humility. So when we apply this intellectual humility to epiphany and the light of Christ, and the Zoroastrians who went to see Jesus and to worship, what we can perhaps realize is that while the light of Christ came for us, perhaps it came in different ways for other people. That perhaps Jesus is a light not instead of other lights, or that he's not the light that puts other lights to shame, but he is the light that leads us 
to God. That means that we can have confidence in our religion, but we can also have hope for other religions. That way we can look at the Islamic faith right next door to us and say, perhaps they have seen the light of God in a different way. We can approach Rabbi Fink in the synagogue and think perhaps the light of God has come to them in a different way. Acknowledging that does not diminish our faith at all. It doesn't need to be a threat to us as Christians. Instead, it helps us to look at all of humanity as being children of God in whatever way God has revealed God's self. And so, back to intellectual humility. Instead of claiming to have the exclusive tr truth, what we could do is strive to be the last and the servant to all, which is what Jesus asked us to do. That the least of these, the last of these, will be first in the kingdom of God. And that the higher up we think we are, the more of a servant to God and to others we become. If we take Jesus' teachings to heart, we don't have to judge other faiths because we have experienced the light of God through Jesus. Amen. Let's stand and join together in our last hymn. Spirit of Jesus, in joyful refrain, echoing songs over Bethlehem's plain, what will we do when we carols all fade? Take up my song, glory, be not afraid. Spirit of Jesus, smiling at the What will we do when the manger's away? Take up my story and live it each day. Spirit, child Jesus, in vigilant eyes, waiting the gift bearing love's great surprise. What will we do when the presents are done? Take up my presence, for I am God's Son. Spirit, child Jesus, in hot tongues of flame, melting the candle, a light in your name. What will we do when the candle is gone? Take up my light, pass it on, pass it on. I did it to you again, a closing hymn that you did not know. But those words were, I think, perfect for our last Sunday where we celebrate the birth of the Christ child. So go in peace with humility. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.